and Tampa Motor Mouth in the zone behind the microphone all crazy all the time. Happy August on this Wednesday, middle of the week, new month. Here we go. And I'll just be straight up if you're looking for Olympics right now. I'll be honest, my focus is on baseball. I tend to, I'm, I'm bringing in because there's definitely a fantasy football slash football story that is very apropos and then I saw a bit of a breaking story that is uh, interesting in not a brilliant type of way as uh, FSU that has already had some problems apparently well this is the breaking story so let's just get to this and then we'll get to all the baseball stuff because that can hold on to its own as FSU Greg Reed dismissed by team this from 620 WDAE's website per release by Florida State Florida State head football coach Jimbo Fisher announced Wednesday that Greg Reed has been dismissed from the FSU football team for a violation of team rules the corner was arrested by Georgia State Patrol on July 11th Reed was charged with driving with a suspended license and possession of marijuana and was taken to the county jail in V-A-L-D-O-S-T-A, Georgia. Oof, rough place. Reed was released on bond and denied possessing marijuana when asked by a Georgia officer about an alleged joint that was found in his car that evening. This incident wasn't the first time Reed has found trouble with law enforcement. Back in September 2011, Reed was arrested for lying to a Leon County police officer for issuing a false written statement under oath. He was booked on perjury, not in an official proceeding, and resisting an officer without violence. Reed had two interceptions for the Seminoles last month. So there goes their first stringer. He, uh, he gone, so he, yeah, boy. Although, compared to some of the stuff happening in college football as of recently, that is of the, how shall we say, the light, light variety. But how about the Rays last night as they won? So, we'll get to that. But first, 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 let's go ahead into the fantasy football angle as hang on as we the fantasy football angle is we're bringing that more into the show as it edges closer now just under 14 days until two drafts and the reason why so far i'm only doing two teams we'll say that probably won't stand pat once you draft you get bitten by the bug and then you're just like i want to do it again and 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 again yeah, talk to friends like, oh yeah, I've already done like five teams. Why? It's just this fancy football. It's let's it gets in your blood. You're just like, ah, one draft again. You just you just wait, see, and and you want to do it. It's you, you get you get addicted to it. But we had two crazy games. Of course, the games that major media, I'm sure, talking up one end down the other, but with good reason. Of course, crazy game in the Bronx, as this was posted as of they're going to the third inning. O's up 7-5, and then the Red Sox-Tigers had a shortened type game, and, and not in a good way. And tough loss for the Tigers, as they, it was a rain-shortened game. What was happening, 4-1 to to the Red Sox in the sixth inning, but... Apparently, what had happened is when the delay came, bases were loaded with two outs. Okay? Do the math. Now, granted, two outs. What could have happened? What could have happened is somebody came up and granted, grounded out, flew out, popped out, most likely some kind of out more than likely especially when you look at score 4 to 1 4 to month 4 to 1 means that the the tigers weren't hitting all that much so you sort of extrapolate that they might have not really had anything done 
wouldn't have uh, gotten any offense in, especially if they've been doing four to one as of six innings. But the devil's advocate could be that somebody could have gotten up and grand slammed. Or even even a double, which would have probably scored two, probably scored two, especially these days with baseball. So you're thinking two runs, that would have knocked it down to 4-3 lead. Somebody else gets up and gets an RBI, you have a tie game. So that's the question. That's the question with how come the game was called. Because, you know, official game, yes, you know, enough innings, yes. But still, when you're talking about... And granted, it's the Red Sox right now, not really in the pennant race. Not uh, really uh, relevant so far. I mean, everybody. Yeah, I mean, I know technically everybody in the AL East is sort of in the wild card. Sort of, kind of. Sort of, kind of in the wild card. But, yeah, you just you just never like to see a game end like that. Now, called on account of rain, right? We remember the 2008 World Series Rays fans. You're going like, would, would, would they have let them continue to play if they hadn't scored in that one game? You, you know that baseball probably wouldn't have. Hmm? Right? they just, ah, uh, just... All the, all the, all the nonsense. But we'll get back to baseball as there's probably a good chance... You're going to wind up with Andre Johnson if you're in a live draft. Or if you can't attend the live draft, and even if you pre-rank players, you might wind up with them anyway. Well, guess what? It's not even preseason yet, kids. Houston wide receiver Andre Johnson, this from the Associated Press, says he'll miss a week or so, in quotes, after a minor groin injury in the team's second morning practice. We're talking not a game, not a game, we're talking about practice. Not the game that I go out and I live and die for, but we're talking about practice. Practice, how silly is that? We're talking about practice. Sorry, I think it's going to be a new thing anytime the men word practiced is mentioned. I'm going to kick in with the Iverson soundbite for uh, this this season of the sports shuffle. I just, it's just, anytime I hear that word, that Iverson routine has been branded into my cerebral cortex. It's in there. I just, I, I practice, not the game, not the game. We're talking about practice. How silly is that? Now, I know it's my, I know it's my, my, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Just practice. I, I know I'm supposed to lead by example. I know that. I'm not setting that aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah you were. You were setting it aside, AI. Yeah. Practice, man. How silly is that? There's even one YouTube video up there that keeps a counter going. I think it's like 20 or 21 times he says practice during that couple minutes. Somebody actually kept a counter going every single time Iverson said practice. Okay. Where were we? That's right. Uh, within the very first sentence. Johnson fell awkwardly during a routine on Sunday morning. And this is as of July 29th. So that would be as we look on the mental calendar. July 29th. So that would be the 25th. Sunday the 25th. Sunday morning. It had an MRI exam later in the day. It showed a mild strain. It just tightened up on me. The five-time Pro Bowl receiver said. I had hit the ground pretty hard. Stretching out for a ball. That was pretty much it. Johnson missed nine regular season games last season. Let me repeat that again. Johnson missed nine regular season games last season with hamstring injuries and was sidelined from the first organized team activities in the spring after arthroscopic surgery on his left knee. Nothing that I'm not used to doing rehab, Johnson said. It's very frustrating, but it happens, man. I wish I had some control over it. Unfortunately, I don't coach Gary Kubiak, said Johnson wanted to continue practicing, but Kubiak took the cautious route. Johnson watched the rest of the outdoor half of the workout with a towel wrapped around his head, then went to Reliance Stadium when the practice moved indoors. So we'll have to see, because of course well, he sat out three to four weeks after the surgery in May, and after playing two, after playing all 16 games in 2008 and 09, Johnson sat out three games in 2010, and last year he hurt his right hamstring against Pittsburgh 
in October, then hurt his hamstring against Atlanta in December. And fantasy football owners everywhere remember the whole... When's Johnson going to be back? Okay, he's back. Is he at full strength? He's back. He's at full strength. It was, when is he going to be back? Okay, he's back. Uh, no, hang on. No, he's not back. Is he at full strength? Because that's the thing. Yeah, if you start somebody, and then Johnson gets like three points, then you have somebody else that has 15 points on your bench, and that was the difference whether or not you won or lost that week. Right? Have we all been there? Have we all been there? We have all been there. Now, let's get to the... Other big story from yesterday in baseball, of course. Well, there was one who had a no-hitter. Are, are you shocked it's A.J. Burnett? He had a no-hitter. Forget it. Yeah, it's gone. Then complete game James is back, folks. Shieldsy, Shieldsy, Shieldsy knew. Shieldsy, and there are a whole bunch of factors. There are a whole bunch of factors. Number one, trade deadline pressure. The last start, oof, horrible. This start, he's like, I'm still a ray. I'm on fire. I am going to dominate the Oakland A's tonight. And he did. And the reason why he was so glad that he did is that the bullpen needed rest after that 15 inning, 3.20 in the morning game. I stayed up for the whole freaking thing. And then I'm going, weeks... Ah, oh, crap, we lost. I stayed up for a five-hour and seven-minute game, and we lost. Now, are you freaking kidding me, Rays? Upton 0 for 7, but Upton redeemed himself last night. He did, but then, uh, Joyce, Joyce and his back. Joyce and his back. Joyce and his back. Ugh, boy. Joyce and his back. Just when he's in, he's, he did good. Joyce did well previous night, not last night. Joyce did well on Monday's game. Last night, e even Carlos Pena, yeah, he made up for <clears throat> little uh, base running at <clears throat> hit and run, steal. Though still, Mol Molina thinks he is still, I don't think anyone will forget Molina trying to think he's Usain Bolt. Yeah. Yeah. Not happening, kids. Not happening. But, of course, and today with the raises, it's a Wednesday schedule, so you know that's staggered. Starts 1-ish and all through the day till about 4 or 5. Then you have maybe a 3-hour gap where there actually are no games that start. Then you have the 7 o'clock games kick in. So you, you have baseball. It's kind of like stacked throughout the entire day. In other words, Wednesday is almost like a Sunday. It's like a second Sunday when it comes to baseball scheduling. Because usually, unless you have like rainouts or makeups or whatevers or just weird scheduling, traditionally, Mondays can sometimes be light. It's a transition day with the series. Ditto, same sometimes with Thursday because it's a tra transition day. S most of the series are ending, no other series are beginning. Ditto, Monday. Weekend series are over. Sometimes you have off days, travel days, etc. So, wh whatever, whatnot. But uh, tonight, is, tonight's like a second Wednesday. I always call Wednesday the second Sunday of baseball. The way the schedule is, just, just all day. Except with the difference with Sunday, you usually only have one game unless you have some crazy circumstances, rain delay, or who knows, that you have a one game. Usually it's done. Uh, the, uh, the Sunday night. But anywho, so let's see already we have... Florida State Seminoles, one of their first team cornerbacks gone, dismissed from the team. Uh, way, way to go there. Good uh, representing the university there. Yeah. Of course, uh, I don't think anyone's really thinking that the Seminoles were, like, going to be national champions anyway this year. Don't think so then. Well, Andre Johnson's already getting the injuries. Not a hamstring, but a groin injury. Out of the way. And it's training camp. Boy. And USA Basketball. Did you see some of that? Gotta got to bring this up. Because there was one proposition bet I ended up tweeting to myself. Uh, here it is by, from Johnny Detroit. By the way, two people who are awesome to uh, follow on Twitter. RJ in Vegas. 
and Johnny Detroit. They're both from pregame.com. When it comes to handicapping and odds and odds forecasting and when when you like little juicy tidbits and nuggets and you're just like, wow, that's interesting. So this one is, and no surprise with how they ended up <laughs> beating Angola. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. Don't this this from Johnny Detroit. This was tweeted yesterday at 12:40 p.m. Olympics. Don't want to take the minus 53.5. Let me say that again. Minus 53.5 on Team USA today in men's basketball only costs three hundred thousand dollars to win one hundred dollars at five dimes. Let me repeat that again. Only costs three hundred thousand dollars. To win one hundred dollars at five dimes, that would be the insane stat of the day. Well, technically yesterday, but because I'm mentioning it today, I'm going to make it the insane stat of the day. Wait a second, hang on. In honor, even though technically they fixed it, in honor of the uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, um, all talked about uh, delayed coverage, this will be the delayed coverage stat of the day. There we go. Hey, paying paying homage. This hour's generic sponsor, delayed coverage. Okay, so that's cool. And had another tweet. But oh no, that was complete game. James Shields win that I tweeted to myself. And any time I see something that's cool, tweet it to myself. Ooh, yeah, this is a good one. Let's break up the uh, sports talk. The primarily the sports talk before we get to the capsules. Because I'm just trying a different type format trying to change it up a little bit so it's not just boom 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 but how about this from deadspin another one of the sites that i like stories to come out with fark is always a good one and don't forget there's something that i'm going to be bringing back more of might even create a new show just for that pop up podcast but to, how about this from Deadspin.com? Cubs fan scoreboard marriage proposal runs while his girlfriend is in the bathroom. Bum, bum, ba, bum, bum. And how about poor Greg? This is from written by Barry P E T C H E S K I. Poor Greg, all that time, money, and emotional torture that went into taking out a scoreboard message on yesterday's Cubs, Cubs game, asking his girlfriend to marry him, and then after an hour-long bottom of the fifth, half-hour long, excuse me, hour-long, half an inning, this, that, that would be like at a Yankees or Red Sox game, just as the proposal was about to run, the girlfriend leaves her seat. In parentheses, perhaps she was getting hot dogs or soda, but come on, she was totally going to poop. Poor Greg. Actually, you know what? He proposed to her on a scoreboard at a Cubs game. Forget Greg. Poor Erica. And then we have an update. We got a nice letter from someone close to Greg's mother, and she requests that we inform you that Erica was actually getting beer, not to poop. So there. So the whole question is... And we have the video here from... Oh. Okay, and they're running a video. They're running a video because she went to the bathroom. And in the video, it's showing. And apparently, everybody is happy. Gave her the ring. She hugs him. And she ended up saying yes. So that's always a. Well, you know, maybe not having her there helped. Because you know what they say about Park Live on TV proposals very very dicey proposition in of themselves but let's get to the american league capsules and then we'll wrap things up for the sports shuffle quick last number one might be planning a show later on tonight for uh, number two as uh, we're having a co-host 
quite possibly returning back to the Sport Shuffle Airways. Now we are linked. You can find Sport Shuffle, just my name on Timbler. YouTube, just do a search for Tampa Mo the Mouth. T P A M O T O R M O U T H. That's the YouTube account there. That's me. Then also, of course, on that Facebook and that Twitter thing. But getting the cap capsules, and we'll see how many names yours truly can mess up. We start with Chris Davis hitting a go ahead grand slam home run in the seventh. And the, hang on, let me start again. A little, a little, a little, a little, a little, a little, and let's get to the AL capsules. As Chris Davis hit a go-ahead grand slam in a seventh run, seven run, second inning, and the Baltimore Orioles, who let the dogs out, who, 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 or in this case, that would be, who let the birds out, tweet, 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 who let the birds out, tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet, Baltimore Orioles rallied from five, ru five runs. I'm having problems saying run today. Don't know why that is. Five runs down to beat the New York Yankees 11-5 on Tuesday nights. Nick Markakis had a two-run home run during his three hits for the Orioles, who have won four of their last six, but finished July 13 and 14, their first month below 500 all season. Ivanova. Ended up allowed a career-high nine runs and five innings for New York, which tied a season-war skid with four straight losses and made a little history and not a good kind in the process. According to Stats LLC, Yankees have been led by five or more after the first inning and then trailed after the second since at least 1918. Yankees have lost 9 of 12. Chris, Chris Tillman, 4-1, was charged with four runs. And, of course, any time the Yankees lose, start spreading the news. Yankees go again down to... Uh, hang on. Let me rewind that again. Start spreading the news. Yankees go down again. Ah. Take three, right, okay, we'll just cut out all the rest of those two, right, okay, you didn't hear that, and action, start spreading the news, Yankees going down again today, they're going to make a suck of it in old New York, ah, I gotta love it, hey, three times a charm, the third time came out, you know what they say, yeah, as I have to ha tip my hat to all those who do a live radio, because yours truly is... A O W I P. That would be El Orco in El Progreso. Angels six over the Rangers two, and down there in Arlington, Texas, Albert Pujols apparently is back. Two home runs. Jared Weaver gets his eight straight start win, leading the Angels over the Rangers. That Trout guy is pretty good. Who homered as the Angels beat the AL West leaders for the second straight day. The Charging Angels and Rangers have two games left in the series. The second straight day, so right now it could be a split series. Could the Angels do the impossible and sweep the sweep the Rangers in a four gamer? Weaver now 14-1, gave up two runs and five hits in six and one third innings. He became the eighth AL pitcher since 1921 to win at least six games without a loss in July. Derek Hol Holland took the loss. Earlier in the day, as you might have heard, Art Art, Texas acquired Chicago Cubs ace Ryan Dempster in a deal shortly before the trade deadline. Royals 8, of course, I am posting on my personal timeline. How about the just slam into the wall from that game? Ouch. Alcides, A-L-C-I-D-E-S. A-L-C-I-D-E-S Escobar drove in three runs. Luke Hockvar, the pitcher who was ejected last start out, pitched six solid innings, and the Royals beat the Indians to snap a five-game losing streak. Escobar had two hits for his 34th multi-hit game. Hochevar, hopefully I'm saying that right, H-O-C-H-E-V-A-R, 7-9, gave up three runs on seven hits and three walks. Six Ks. Derek Lowe failed to finish the third and balked in a run. Ouch. Run balked in, which still counts as an RBI. I still say it should be BB RBI. BBI. Okay, gotta work on this. 
run bolt in. Well, that would still actually be RBI, but instead of run batted in, change it run bolt in. Right? I mean, seriously. How can I just I don't get that hat that anything that causes a run to cross a plate, even technically if it's not a run or a hit, it still counts as an RBI. That's just one thing that I never get is baseball. I I just don't. I don't. Red Sox four, Tigers one, of course in that five innings short game. Now this is interesting. AP has this down for five innings, and some people say six. So, in fact, if it's five innings, so that, 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 that's going to be an interesting homework assignment. Because if it's five innings, does it count as an official game? So, hang on. Official game. I know this is absolutely fascinating live radio, but baseball, how many... Because I know in baseball there's a certain amount of innings that you have to that you have to play in order for the game to count. Okay, so here we go. No, nope. fifth inning. No, apparently. Uh, this is from Wikipedia. I know, I know people are going Wikipedia. And we'll look up the actual rules in baseball before we do the show. Well, I, we're going to do show tonight. That apparently it's the fifth inning is used as the threshold. Oh, okay. So that's the thing that, uh, see, it says most professional games are nine innings long. The fifth inning is used as a threshold for an official game. If the visiting team is leading or the team is tied, the end of the fifth inning make marks this point if the home team, which bats last, is already ahead in the score, theoretically would not need its half of the fifth inning. Then four and a half innings, i.e. the middle fifth, is considered an official game. The game is also considered official. The home team scores to take the lead in the bottom of the fifth. Since the game would end immediately, the same thing happened in the ninth. In nearly all cases, the official game status is used to determine whether a rain check will be honored for fans holding tickets. The game is started and does not reach the point of being coming official. Fans are entitled to a new ticket for the makeup game, or in most cases, any other available game of choice. If the game is held after it becomes official, the game is simply shortened and no rain check is given. Uh, that's interesting to note, because I always thought it was sixth inning. So, yeah, Tigers got screwed. Clayton Mortensen pitched two and two-thirds shutout innings after Josh Beckett left with back spasms, and the Red Sox beat the Tigers in a game halted by rain and the top of the sixth inning. Now, that's interesting there, because the top line says five inning, top of the sixth inning, so technically, technically, five innings completed. That's past the threshold, and Tigers were the home team, so... I don't, know. I don't know if the Tigers can play that game, the next game, under protest as a result. I, I'm, I might consider doing that if I were Jim Leland. Detroit had the bases loaded with two outs when the tarp was rolled out on the field. The game was called one hour, 45 minutes later. Oof. Especially if that's sloppy. I mean, they're waiting that long to just call the game, giving the Red Sox their fourth straight win and sending the Tigers their fifth loss in six games. Mortensen, 1-0, allowed one hit and three walks with one strikeout after being recalled from earlier in the day from AAA Paw Tuckett. Tigers ace Justin Verlander gave up all four runs in the fourth inning when he issued two of his four walks. So, yeah, you know, there you go. Well, Justin Verlander not exactly having a good day, so maybe it was a blessing that it was a shortened game. White Sox 4, Twins 3, A.J. Przinski, a gentleman we definitely don't like down here in Tampa Bay, in a two-run home run in the ninth inning, and the White Sox held on to beat the Twins after Alex Rio singled off of Jeff Gray. Przinski hit a 0-2 pitch into the right field bleachers for a second home run as many nights. Matt Thornton, now 3-6, and six, pitched a 1-2-3-8 for the win. Addison Reed allowed an RBI single to Spawn, who did not want to be traded. We remember earlier in the day, the bottom of the ninth, but still earned his 17th save and 20 chances. How about this one? This, uh, ah, man, just uh, chatting on, chat, uh, just, a, just a Jekyll and Hyde team. That's, that's the best way to describe this. This. Rays 8, Athletics so This is the same team from the previous night before. James Shield pitched a three-hitter. B.J. Epton drove in two runs, and Tampa broke out of its prolonged offense slump to beat 
the team from Oakland. Sam Flood had three hits, up to that at two, and six different players drove in runs for the Rays. Tampa Bay winning the game last in the majors in hitting. Yeah, we know about that. And scored only nine runs in its previous four games. We also know about that, too, before knocking A starter Tommy Mill. Own, spelled M-I-L-O-N-E, nine, now 9-8, nine and eight, around for two runs in the second and three in the fifth. That was all Shields, now 9-7, and seven, needed to secure his seventh career shutout. Complete game, freaking James is back. He gave out one sink, one, he gave up a, lit up, rewind, press play. He gave up one, A, one out single to Chris Carter in the second, and lead off single to Jamie Week, Jamel, Jamel? J-E-M-I-L-E Weeks in the 4th and 2 out single to George Conneris in the 8th Blue Jays uh, Blue Jays up and down uh, They're down, Mariners 7, Blue Jays 2 uh, Snackley drove in 3 runs and Jason Vargas pitched 7 strong innings to lead the Mariners to their 6th consecutive victory Vargas 12 and 7 allowed 12, 2 runs and 5 hits 12 runs, ouch, yeah He walked run 1 he rocked run. He walked run. Yeah. He walked one and struck out four. Last time the Mariners won six consecutive games. Mark this down in your calendars, kid. It was May 18th to 23rd, 2011. Toronto starter Aaron Laffey. Now 5-500, five, 2-2. Five two two. Lasted just four and two-third innings. Allowed nine hits and seven runs. And that's pretty much what's going on here. As we'll check uh, Twitter to see if there's anything going on as far as breaking news goes just because eh, I tend to roll like that and that's when you like something that's quicker than a computer that you can just bring up and whoop let's say say nothing 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 well apparently a NFL Network uh, Broadcasting Bucks training camp right now. Somewhat interesting. Apparently okay. I'm looking, nothing breaking. Postal office on the verge of the fall. Okay. No shock there. Yeah, nothing. I'm sure we see like breaking, 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 breaking. Anywho, that's it for me right now. Thank you all for tuning in for a quick half for a quick blast. That's not so much of a quick blast, but hey, didn't do one yesterday, so trying to make up for it after just that at 3:20 a.m. game catches up to you when you only get like five hours sleep. It's like yeah, okay, I think. I think we're going to back off because I've always learned that, you know, you always want to beat your prime. And super, super cool shows. So it's also, besides sports, I do want to point out that there is some good TV on. Dallas is tonight, on tonight. Uh, that's what uh, I'm going to sneak in there somehow. With, oh, no, well, the race game is in the afternoon, so boom. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Dallas, it's uh, episode eight of 10 shows it's getting really good and they have been renewed for the second season also for those of you who happen to be transformer remember the old g1 cartoon peter peter Cullen, the voice of optimus prime guess what there's a new series out if you haven't seen it already it's called transformers prime and peter uh, it's peter Cullen back as optimus prime Frank Welker, who, if you remember, was the original Megatron from G1 and was even in all of the Transformer movies along with Peter Cullen. The two are back. Of course, Starscream's a different voice since then. Fortunately, the greatness that was Chris Lett uh, was, uh, is, is no, mo no mo longer around. Fortunately, R.I.P. But another interesting voice you might remember if you're a Star Trek fan. Jeffrey Coombs is the voice for Ratchet. 
So that's cool. You have Peter Cullen, who you know, Frank Welker, who you know, and you have Ratchet. It's interesting. It's got kids in it. The kids are interesting characters. Kids are interesting characters. So that's a good show. So, of course, uh, one, one Dallas, definitely. I'm going to be sorry to see that one go into hiatus. But at least there's a uh, season two. Elena Ramos. Mm. Yeah, I already did it. I'm like, yeah, okay, she's married. Not Granted, not that I would have probably had a chance. To. Anyway, but, yeah, official TV soap opera sports shuffle crush oh yeah anywho then another show now this one you might have to how shall we say do some hunting on the internet for best way to say that it's a show from canada called continuum where somebody travels a police officer law enforcement officer travels from, travels from about 2076 2077 travels back in time to 2012 with a whole bunch of terrorists and her mission becomes to tr stop the terrorists so there there is some good tv out there after all ah i mean yeah no star trek or stargate but uh, there there is some, there is some good tv out there yeah you kind of kind of have to kind of open your mind like oh, okay what's this hey let's check this out this is cool yeah so yeah, yeah, I'm 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 not much on the Summer Olympics. I don't think I've ever been. I'd like the Winter Olympics better, cause there's hockey, there's hockey, hockey. Then you have the luge thing, and then you have all the downhill skiing, and I I don't know why. I've just I've just never been drawn in by the Summer Olympics. You know, it's just to me meh. It's like eh, okay. Watch the USA team, one were good, beat up the other team, or one were bad, be beaten up. Eh. Anywho, that's it for me. Thank you all for tuning in again. I see everybody following the Sports Shuffle. Either on Twitter lets me know, or I get the email. So thank you. I appreciate all the follows very, very much. Welcome to the crew. New project that's in the works. It's taking a while. It's under construction coming up with a bulletin board a forum for the sports shuffle so you can go there and you can post the questions and then I get to the questions or my co-host when I'm joined by a co-host the next show because as the, the schedule is a little bit sporadic but you post the question then we get to the show and one is up one is ready to go I will let you know and give you the address want to give you out the official sports shuffle rant line and how the rant line works is that if you want to be a part of the show because with the way the technology is we can do that now and finally have it down to a science so if you want in the last one I haven't changed it since when was July 28th July 20th that's sort of like you, if you're ever like what day is it what day? okay I know I haven't changed the shuffle official question of the day since Tuesday but you go to the Facebook Sports Shuffle site. I'll have and I'll change it to today. So if you see it, it's from July 28th. That's not the new question day. I'll post the new question of the day. Then there will be a number there that's from Google Voice. As a, if, if you want to get your own phone number, your own text message where people can send you texts and voicemails. And by the way, this number you can send texts to. So you can either send a text message if you want to, something you heard on the show, something going on, something I talked about, something I haven't talked about in the sports. Send me a text. If it's good enough, it's funny enough and clean, I'll read it on the air. Ditto likewise. You can also send not only text to this number, but also a honest-to-goodness voicemail. If you don't want to rack up your phone bill, just get, just get Skype. And Skype has a plan where it's like for two bucks, two or three bucks a month, you sign up unlimited calls to anywhere in North America or Canada, and that covers the Skype number. So you can just Skype the number, leave your message, or if you, so you don't have to worry about the crazy phone bill. Or maybe if you have one of those plans, it just doesn't matter any number where you call unlimited calling wherever you can do that too. But the number is two two five two six seven seven six seven eight. Once again. 225-267-7678-225-76, oh, yeah, 225, got to get you saying the number, sorry, 
225-267-7678. One more time, 225, say it with me, 267-7678. And leave a voicemail and the question of the day that I will post momentarily will be, what did you think of the baseball trade deadline as far as your team goes? Were you happy with what was done? Were you not happy with what was done? Was not enough done? Did you wish your team did more, a.k.a. the Rays, or... Were you happy that your team maybe didn't do anything to change the chemistry? So that's my question today. Put put on your general manager hat, as, as we all like to do that as sports fans. Put on your general manager hat. Evaluate, for me, your team's trade deadline moves or a lack thereof. E.g., with the raise, that would have been Ryan Roberts for the Diamondbacks. That's it. So, anyway, that's it for me, as I'm really going to sign off now. Turned into a full show, so I guess we'll need to change the title. <laughs> Wasn't much of a quick blast after all, was it? Oh, hang on. Oh, okay. Th thank you, thank you, Big Mac. I see you there. Hi. Uh, I'm not used to somebody actually using the chat box, so I apologize for not seeing this before. So, hi back to Big Mac. Yeah, so thanks for, re thanks for responding. But, uh... That's it for me. You're still you. I'll talk to you next time. Probably thinking doing a show tonight. Probably during baseball, late night games, and all that. Anywho, talk at you next time. Don't forget to give me a like on Facebook at Sports Shuffle. And give me a follow on that Twitter thing at Sports Shuffle. I'm gone.